Greetings, fellow cyberheads and computer newbies. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take this dilapidated old laptop. It's a Dell XPS M1330, circa 2008. Brilliant machine. Problem is, if I try to run Windows 10 on it, it's a little bit laggy. A lot of the drivers don't actually work for Windows 10. They work up to, I think, Windows 8.1. Now I could swap out the hard drive and put a SSD drive in there and that would definitely revolutionize this machine but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you don't even need to do that. If you wanted to do that, that would take it to the next level but what we're going to do is we're actually going to overwrite the Windows XP operating system and we're going to put a Linux distro or distribution onto this machine. It's really easy to do. The brilliant thing is that once we install the Linux distribution on this, all the drivers that we need, even the NVIDIA GeForce graphics for the screen will be installed. Well, we'll actually have to install it, but it will be available to us. All we need is a flash drive or a USB stick. This one that I have here has a two gigabyte capacity, so it's perfect for what we need it for. Firstly, we need to download the Peppermint operating system. So if I just search for Peppermint 10 download. And I'll just go to the first link. Now what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to download using a torrent. I'm going to use a torrent client. So what I need to do first is Download QBitTorrent. QBitTorrent. Here it is, the official website. And this download link here for this machine that I'm using, which is a Windows 10 machine. So I just nip down here to the Windows X64, which is the 64 bit version. And I'll just download that into my downloads folder. And once that's finished downloading, let's just open it or install it. And just follow through the process, read the license agreement if you want, and then accept it. Go next, next, and install. And so I'll just launch it so it's running in the background. There we go, ready to go. So now what I'll do is I'll go to the torrent, and because I know that this laptop over here is a 64-bit laptop, I'll go to this the 64-bit ISO and just click on that and it wants us to either start or save it I'm just going to save it so I can delete the torrent afterwards put it into the downloads folder and save and there it is there so I'll just click that once and it automatically loads it into Cuba torrent and there we go it's running so if you just pop down to the general tab down here that's where you've got the info. As you can see, it's pretty fast. This is 1.45 gigabytes of data, so it's actually a bit faster than downloading it directly. So I'll just let that download in the background and we'll just close that tab. Right, so the next thing to do is to download a little application to put Peppermint onto this USB drive. So what we're going to do now is go to the Rufus website. So that's R-U-F-U-S download and here we go I'll just click on the first one now there are other programs you can use to do this very same thing this is the one that I prefer because it's very fast and it's a very small program which is really cool so click on Rufus 3.8 that's the latest download Here we go and just chuck it in your downloads folder 
Now, the interesting thing about this piece of software is that it doesn't actually install as a program in your applications folder. It kind of hangs out by itself as a .exe, so it's an executable file. Oh, the torrent's almost done. Now that is pretty quick, isn't it? For 1.45 gigabytes, imagine downloading that not using a torrent. It would be much, much slower. So we'll just wait for that to finish. Brilliant. Now what we could do is just leave it running while it's seeding. So this is actually sharing this file now, this completed file, with these three different people. So we'll just let that run for a, for a little bit while we're downloading Rufus. I'm going to try it again because as you can see it seems to be hanging halfway. So I'll just press Rufus again. hopefully going to overwrite the first one. There we go, that was very quick wasn't it? So I'll cancel this other one. Cool. So what we'll do first is we'll go over to the Rufus download and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it into my start menu. So the start menu here. So firstly we'll just go to this little arrow to the right. Show in folder. So firstly I'll find Rufus and I'll just cut it. So that's like a copy but it'll delete the original when you paste in the new location. So then go down to your local disk which is the C drive. So we just open that folder and go up to your little folder icon up here or control shift N. We'll just we'll do the shortcut. I always like shortcuts. Control shift N. Yes I would like to do this action and then call this folder Rufus. Rufus return then open that folder and right click and paste yes we are the administrator so I'll just go OK and there it is now in the program files section so what I'll do now is I'll just right click Rufus and scroll down to where it says pin to start. Here we go, so I'll click that. And now if we go over to our start menu, we'll find, there it is, Rufus has just appeared. So I'll just drag that up over to my section over here. So now if I click on Rufus, it will open the program. And there we go. So I can minimize these other windows. And I can minimize that one too. So here we are in Rufus. Now I can see the USB stick has shown up in the device. So what I'll do is I'll go to the boot selection and I'm going to look for the ISO image that I downloaded with Qubit Torrent. So I'll just go select here. And navigate to our downloads folder and here it is here. This is the ISO that I'm going to put onto the flash drive or the USB stick. And I'll just press open. There we go. Actually what I'll do is another step. I'll go back to the file and now I'll just click twice and it's activated the name of the file. So what I'll do is I'll just copy that which is control C and then cancel that because we've already loaded it there and I'll just put it in here in the volume label so we've named it and we know that it's this version on this flash drive so if there is an update in the future we know that the version name will change so now press start go OK to writing it in ISO image mode Warning, all data on the device will be destroyed. And we'll just go OK. So I'll just leave that to do its thing and we'll check in when it has completed. Now we are all done with that, so I can close that program. 
and I'll just go down to the taskbar and eject the USB drive. So there it goes there, I'll just click on that. And we'll just check that it's gone. Yes, good. So now I'll remove the USB drive from the computer. Right, so now that we've put the installer onto the USB drive, or the flash drive, let's jump into this computer and get right into it. So if you just throw the USB drive into the computer, here you go. And if you have a network cable, an Ethernet network cable, just plug that in as well. What you'll find is that with this install you actually have the option to download all the drivers and things in the background. So hence we have the Ethernet network cable plugged in. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press the power button and then as soon as I press the power button I'm going to start pressing the F2 key. So there's the power button. Now I'm pressing F2. The reason why I'm doing this is that I want to get into the BIOS. Right, so using the arrow key what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my way down to the boot sequence. There we go. Just to check that the USB drive is going to boot before the internal hard drive which that is the case. We have the USB storage device in the number one position so that's good. It'll boot before the internal hard drive. If that wasn't the case, for example, if I just go enter and go D down. So if for example the USB drive was after the internal hard drive, all I'd want to do is just move the USB higher on the hierarchy. Just press enter, then I'll press the arrow key to go down to the USB storage device. Press U for up, there we go, and then press enter. So now it's in front of the internal hard drive. So now what I'm going to do is escape to exit the setup. Escape and then arrow over to save and exit and then press enter. So now essentially we should be booting into the USB drive. Brilliant, and here we are at the installer. So we're just going to go straight to install Peppermint OS. You could use this option, OEM install for manufacturers, if you were actually refurbishing computers so that they would go out the door blank and then the first time that the computer's new user boots up the computer, it'll, it'll actually ask them to create a login name and a password, so that's a handy. But we're just going to do a standard install, so I'll select install Peppermint and I'll just press enter. Start up, just readjust the screen for us. And here we are at the first screen, so please just select your language. For this install, we're going to pick English. Just continue. And we'll just stick with the standard US English keyboard layout. Continue. Brilliant. So in this option here, we're going to do a normal install. And I'll tick this box here, install third-party software. So that's for some hardware codecs and drivers that we'll need for the hardware. So we'll just go continue. And because we actually have our network cable plugged in, we can actually install third-party software. It'll actually download in the background, which is really brilliant. What a very helpful operating system. Awesome. So now in this stage, we're asked if we'd like to keep the operating system that we already have on this computer and run Peppermint alongside it, which is really handy if you have software or hardware that is specific to whatever operating system you're running. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to install Peppermint on the entire drive and we'll even encrypt it just for that extra layer of security. And then I'll just choose the security key. Brilliant, and install now. 
Right, so would you like to write the changes to the disks? Continue for yes. Brilliant, so choose your time zone and continue. Throw in a name, I'll just call this pep 10 for peppermint 10. And I'll keep the name and the username and choose a password. Cool, and continue. Brilliant, so now it's in the install process. If I just go down to this little arrow down here next to copying files and click that, it shows us what is actually going on. So we'll just leave that running in the background. So what I'll do is I'll speed up this process so that you don't have to sit through the entire thing. And brilliant, we have done it. We've now installed Peppermint. So now if I just press restart, by memory I don't think it actually prompts us to remove the USB drive but we'll just see if it does do that. Okay, it's gone straight into the USB drive installer menu, so I'll see if I can boot from the hard disk from here. No, it won't allow me to. So I'll just power the machine down, and then I'll just remove the USB drive. Right, so let's power this little machine up now. So because this is the first time this operating system is booting up on this machine, it's probably going to take a bit longer the first time it boots up, and that's to be expected. There we go, so we just put in the first password we put in. press enter so that's decrypted the hard drive so we can actually use the operating system which is a, just an extra layer of security it's very good great so now we just pop in our password here and enter And boom shakalak, we are in. And just like that, we have done it. So we've given this decade old laptop a new lease on life. It's uh, running a lot faster now and actually has a few security features which we'll go through in the next episode. Now if you'd like to support the channel, feel free to smash the like button or subscribe if you haven't already and I'll endeavor to bring you some great content so I'll catch you next time Cheers.